I'm going to go through an FRQ problem with you. I want to do one uh, with a calculator, and then I'm going to make another video that will go through and do one that's not, uh, without a calculator. So you get some extra practice, because sometimes with the FRQs, just getting used to seeing more of them makes you a little more comfortable when you get ready to take the actual AP test. So this particular question is a calculator allowed one. It was the second question on the test. Um, this question did not come from the AP College Board. It came from the uh, test prep booklet that we use for weekly problems and for some of the in-class problems that we've done. So designed to be pretty tough questions. Uh, the only downside is when I go through the answers with this, I don't have a definitive rubric as far as what the AP would do to earn the nine points, but I can go through and give you kind of my best estimate on where those nine points would come. So this particular problem is having sand being poured into a bin that is initially empty, so we don't have to worry about an initial value. Um, during the workday, we're looking at a nine-hour period. We have a rate in which the sand is going into the bin. After an hour, from one to nine hours, we have a rate that sand is being removed from the bin. And we're going to be asked a series of questions about the sand. How much is going in? How much is coming out? When is their maximum? Things like that. So dealing, everything is dealing with this, these rates of sand. I'm going to take you through each one. Definitely can try it on your own. You can try it one part at a time. Each slide, I'm going to go through one part. So if you want to do this one part at a time and then check your work, you can do that. Or if you want to try to go through the entire problem and then pr play the rest of the video and watch me explain one part at a time, that would work too. So we're going to start with part A. Part A wants to know how much sand is put in, into the bin during the workday. This is an example of integrate to accumulate. The idea that we have a rate, the rate that it's being put into the bin, if we integrate that rate during the correct time interval, we will get the amount of sand that has gone into the bin. So what the AP would expect is that you would write down the definite integral. So the integral is from 0 to 9 because that is the workday. And we are integrating, you can either write S of t, or you can rewrite what S of t is. Either one is considered acceptable, as long as you're using the same letter names that they use. So I'm writing it like this. You could definitely just write S of t in place of the actual equation. At that point, you're using your calculator. There's nothing that I have to do by hand. I do not need to attempt to integrate this by hand. It's actually something that I can't. I'm going to my calculator. I'm using the FNINT button. And I'm getting an answer of 415. 0.421, you want to make sure you have three decimal place accuracy, and you need to make sure you have units. They're specifically telling you to have units, even if they don't, you want to get in that habit. If the rate is in cubic meters per hour, and we're looking over an hour period, whenever I integrate, I will be left with cubic meters of sand. So you can write the words cubic meters, or you can just write meters cube. That is all you would need for part A. My belief is something like that would be worth two points. One point that you successfully set up the integral, and then a point that you got your answer, including the unit, and with three decimal place accuracy. If all you give is the answer, potentially you may not get any points, because that's considered a bald answer, meaning that you have an answer with no backing up as far as where did that answer come from. Letter B wants to know what happens when you would get F, S of 6 minus R of 6. Give a unit of measure and then explain what that, that answer actually means in terms of the problem. So S of 6 minus R of 6 is nothing more than plug and chug. You are not deriving or integrating anything. It just wants to know what happens when you put 6 in for S, what happens when you put 6 in for R, and then subtract them. So you can go through and do this entirely on your calculator. Um, I did S of 6. You could enter it in your calculator and just have it figure out S of 6. It is approximately 18.797. Again, if you store that in your calculator so you're not really rounding until the end. And then R of 6, you're putting 6 into the R function, you get approximately 58.707. And again, I'm writing three decimal places, but I'm keeping, I'm storing that number in my calculator so I'm not losing any accuracy. When you take S of 6 minus R of 6, you get around negative 39 point nine one zero my unit since I'm but when you're subtracting your units don't change so I'm working with cubic meters per hour minus cubic meters per hour so my unit is still cubic meters per hour and I think most students can successfully do that they can do the subtraction they can get the answer and they can get the unit sometimes the toughest part is the explanation of what this number actually means what this number actually means is it's a rate because you're subtracting one rate minus another meaning you're still getting a rate and you can tell the rate is in meters cube per hour this means that the amount of sand is decreasing because it's negative at a rate of 39.910 cubic meters per hour at that time six so you could I would write that as a sentence the amount of sand 
is decreasing. And what you're, when you're saying decreasing, you're telling the person who's grading it that you understand that the reason it's negative, a negative rate, is that it is decreasing at a rate of 39.910 cubic meters per hour at time t equals 6. And that, I'm not sure how picky they'll be, but that could be a very important phrase showing that you realize that this isn't a rate that's going to happen all the time. It's only the rate at that particular time. So we've got, this, this 6 doesn't show up very well, sorry about that. We've got an answer, we've got a unit, and then we have an explanation of that answer. Um, this, this particular part, since you're not doing a lot of calculus here is probably worth two points. Uh, one, that you're accurately getting the negative 39.910 cubic meters per hour. And then one, that you're explaining what does that mean. And the idea is that it represents a rate. I think the common mistake that students make is, th is to having that having them think that that's the actual amount of sand instead of actually realizing it's the rate that the sand is either going in or coming out. So we're actually losing more sand in that time period. To me, Part C is the toughest to really get a good way to explain. And uh, I'm not sure whether they would make this worth two or three points. I think with C and D, one of them would be worth two and one would be worth three. And it would really be kind of up to the judgment of whoever was writing this question what they think would be mo the most points where you could earn them. Um, this Part C wants to know why the maximum amount of sand in the bin is when S of T equals R of T. And I've had students do this different ways and explain it different ways. I'm going to show you the way that they kind of recommend explaining it. And the recommendation is that if we think of our amount of sand in the bin as, or as an A of T, so that is the amount of sand, and just using A for amount. If I wanted to generically write that, I would say the amount of sand in the bin would be the integral from 0 to T of my S function. What that does is that's integrating the uh, rate that it's being entered in. And you'll notice I did make sure that I don't want everything to be in the same variable. So I'm using t for time for my boundary, but I'm then using s of x for my sn function. That's going to give me the amount um, coming in. And then if I subtract the amount going out, and that's an integral as well, so looking at this kind of statement, the idea that the amount of sand in the bin at any one time is going to be the, um, the integration of the rate coming in minus the integration of the rate going out. Now, if I derive that using a second fundamental theorem of calculus, I can say that the derivative, if I take the derivative of an integral, I get what I started with, just replacing that top boundary with the, that x with the top boundary t. Minus, same thing, the derivative of the integral is you get what you started with, putting that top boundary in. This is what I know. I know that my derivative is the rate of the s of t minus the r of t. And in order to have something be a maximum, that's got to equal 0. So what this is saying is the maximum has to occur when the rate going into the bin is equal to the rate being removed from the bin. And a lot of times, and here's where I'm not sure how picky they would be on explanation, a lot of times students do a better job of just explaining that in words. The idea is once you get to that time period, and if you want to know the exact time period, um, I don't know if they were required, but you can actually find when those are equal using your calculator. It happens at about 3.837 hours. And I've had students kind of explain it in words, saying prior to that time, the amount being put in is bigger, is, is faster, is a greater rate than the amount being removed. And it's not until that time when the amounts are the, the amount coming in and the rate coming out are the same, that's, that is, it's still, you're still increasing the amount of sand. It's kind of like the problem we did in class where people were getting in line for an amusement park ride. Until the rate that they start taking things out can actually overtake the rate going in, you're going to still be adding sand to the pile. So it's not until those two rates are equal that we start to finally get to a point where we're removing 
putting more than we were putting in, so we get a maximum. Uh, I, here is where I'm not sure how picky they would be if they actually want you to write it with integration symbols, or you can use more words. Um, I, I also did this one time, and I used more words instead of writing this, and I wrote, before this time, the rate being poured in is greater than the rate being poured out. After it, the rate being taken out is greater than the rate being put in. So that is when your maximum would occur. And then finally, Part D, which is a little easier to explain, both at, for me to explain and for the, uh, you to explain to the grader. It wants to figure out how much sand is actually in the bin at the end of the day. So if we use kind of that same idea where we took the integral of what's going in minus the integral of what's being removed, we can get that final amount. So the setup for this one would be the integral from 0 to 9 of S of t because that's going to give the amount of sand that's actually being put in over the 9 hours, minus the integral from 1 to 9. And you do want to make sure you put 1 to 9, because the problem did tell you we're not starting uh, removing until 1 hour, of R of t. So you have to have this point in or this statement in order to get a point. The next thing you have to have is the numeric answer. And you do not need the in-between. You can write this as is and then just give your final answer. Both of these integrals are done with the F and I and T button. You end up getting negative point zero zero seven, and we are still working in cubic meters of sand. And I believe that would be worth one point. Your third point, potentially, and here's where I'm not sure whether part C was worth three points or part D would be worth three points, potentially that third point is coming from the explanation. What does it mean that your answer is negative? What that means is you're out of sand in the bin because you've actually removed more than what was in there. So uh, you can't, l logically, you can't have negative amount of sand. So your final statement should be there is no sand left in the bin. And just by making that statement, you understand that you really can't have a negative answer there. That negative answer is just telling you that there's no sand left. At uh, some point right before that nine hour mark would have been the time where we were completely out of sand because that number is so close to zero. So this problem takes you through a pretty uh, standard type of question you're going to see on a calculator allowed. Usually um, one of the two calculator allowed tends to be some sort of integrate to accumulate. Uh, they also may do one that is more of a visual type problem, but this gives you a good way of how do you use your calculator, how do you set up, and how do you try to get every single point that you can possibly earn on an FRQ.